All right, guys, so here every once in a while I get questions from students on how to do things. In this particular one, the question, uh, student's question was, what's the best way, the most appropriate way to tackle um, projection mapping in Mudbox? <clears throat> so I'm going to run through how to do that and how to do some editing. You can actually edit your stencil that we're going to use. And I'm going to show you different ways that you can get effects and looks that you want using Mudbox. There's a, it, Mudbox is pretty in-depth, but these are actually some good uh, things to practice. All right, so what we'll do here, let's go and open here. I'm going to open up a Hypo Worm, a student gave me. In this file, I also have the normal map nearby. So be careful with this. When you do have a normal map already loaded, uh, make sure that it is nearby your FBX if you're going to have them auto load so you can maybe edit it or tweak it out in any way. I'm going to say open. Um, what happens with Mobox when it has this warning? Mobox is very picky. It wants everything quads because when you sculpt you can run into some bad pinching. So keep that in mind if you decide to go back and forth between texture painting and sculpting that you don't have these triangle, these, these, these hot points, these stars because they can be a problem. But for texturing we're not going to worry about it. It's not going to be a problem at all. We're going to keep this mesh. Now the mesh when they come in are typically too super small. So what we'll do is we're going to actually make them a little bit bigger just visually to be able to see them and make sure we don't run into any camera issues with uh, clipping in any way because it does have its limit if something is really small. So we're going to go real big here. We'll make them really big. And this all depends on your graphics card too, but I like to make it uh, a decent size so that we can texture paint this. Um, let's unselect this guy for a second and go to like the paint tools it should automatically turn that off and anytime you're too far out remember you can always hit the uh, A key to frame your object in the scene to make sure it's all in there I get those confused sometimes with the unreal the home key or UDK um, also if you want to see the back side of it what I did was I turned on display and I said show both sides showing both sides now otherwise this would be kind of invisible alright so we got this guy set up we see his mouth of death there so we got the normal map that automatically loaded let's make a base texture so I'm gonna do a new layer make sure because by default it's on normal map and I make this mistake a lot make sure that you uh, switch this to diffuse set your appropriate resolution we'll call this base hit OK and then I'm going to make another new layer this one's going to be the spec so let's get the spec going and we'll call this also base and we'll hit OK oh let's give it a different name forgot about that base spec there we go so the uh, Autodesk gods don't get mad at us alright so with that ba base spec so you don't get extra sliminess happening you want to be able to control where it's slimy I think it's always a good habit to do that I set my color to black here in my paint brush this is my soft brush and it's the only brush in which you can flood your paint layer so I can paint flood that in there and we get rid of specs so now we can control and paint our spec in later on all right and the normal map also is on a layer so if you needed to dumb it down you can dumb it down Make it really low. Actually, that's my diffuse. Let's put that back up because we're not there yet. So we'll get a normal map down here. I'm gonna make sure I read. And you can lower your normal map if you need to. And in this case, we'll just put it back to its regular strength that we want. All right, so let's go and play with this a little bit. You can see it active by turning it on and off. So we're gonna do some painting on this guy. And I'm gonna show you how to also make another normal map. We'll make a base butt map, convert it to a normal map. And the butt map, we can paint on it, and then Mudbox will convert that. So if we need to make a little bit more complicated features on our guy, we can. So let's go to projection. Let's talk about this for a second. So in projection, the one that it likes to use is stencil. Now, if you watch any of my other Mudbox videos, you'll see stamp mainly has to do with the brush. And then stencil has to do with projection. So when you are using stencil, you have to be in projection mode. If you're not, the whole thing's going to be black and white. So you can load your stencil through here by adding stencil, but you can also load a whole directory going into image browser and you can load the directory through clicking on your folder and you can grab wherever you've put it. 
and it will load all of it. It'll just say you you'll say choose directory and it'll load all the images that you have. Now, I just loaded a couple of simple worm ones. And we're going to play with the color, and I'm going to also show you how to edit your stencil, which is very helpful, especially if you have certain particular shapes and types of uh, strange deformation and so forth on your object. You can actually play with it a little bit. All right, so we got this all set up. Let's go ahead. Again, you can once you grab it in your directory, you have to make sure you hit stencil too. There's a little stencil active here, which is great. All right, so let's go down back to 3D view. Let's go and grab one of these guys. We'll grab one of the general ones, just called Wormy here. And uh, we can grab any of these, really. So we'll, let's go to Image Browser. We'll just grab the default bug one here. There he goes. I think it'll work. With him selected, I'll just say use stencil. Go back to 3D View, and you'll now see that it is active. Now, to be able to control how it is position you do need to rotate your camera this isn't like Mari where you can move it in an active floating um, texture that usually takes a lot of memory so if you don't have a lot of memory for those type of computer uh, systems like using Mari keep that in mind but in Mobox it's pretty straightforward and then you can go to Photoshop and we'll talk about that connection in a second you can move it so I don't mind the fact that Mobox has that because it's a little bit more intuitive for me personally and I can work a little bit faster all right, so we got this here. Let me go increase my brush size. Keep my finger at the B key. I can raise this up so I can start painting immediately. So we make sure we're on the diffuse. Don't be on the normal map. I'm on a diffuse right now. So we'll go in here and we can paint. Let me use my Wacom here. And you can control, if you want to, you can control your visibility too down here with that active. And there are refresh issues sometimes with my box. <clears throat> if it choose something earlier that you selected it maybe stamp just go back to your stencil and click on it again and you'll get this guy to come up so we'll do a little painting here but say we're noticing there's certain areas on the worm that like that's straight but we'll notice there's a, a curve maybe in some of these areas it's gonna act a little weird so as I'm painting you'll notice hey I want this to deform a little bit differently so what you can do and this is actually kind of cool I can go under here and we can start to edit our stencil. It's actually pretty stinking cool. Now what editing the stencil does, it allows you to actually reposition and tweak out your stencil so that it fits the contours of your object. So let's go ahead and do that real quick here. Let me see if I can uh, remember where the sucker is at. There he is at the bottom. We're going to go to edit stencil and it's going to ask me, we're going to have to increase his size here for this demonstration. Oh, control C. And uh, we'll do the S key. There we go. Get him into shape. And we can choose how we want him to look. So you can see the color and how the, exactly the color is going to, to look here. And this is semi transparent. This is full color. No transparency. So you can control that. And I can go to any of my sculpt tools. And you'll see that Mobox lets you know. And I'll go to my sculpt tool here. And make sure it's all in transparency. And I can go in here and we'll even lower the visibility a little bit here. Probably doesn't do it really well in this mode. But we can go in here, oops, control Z, and we can go to our like grab tool. All right, the S button to get him in the right position. And the B button to increase his size. And I can go in here and I can move the stencil where I want him to be on the worm. So like maybe I want to bend this a little bit there. Do a little bit over here and I can bend this back here. So you can really get your texture to fit exactly the way that you want. And grab is my preferred shape here. And you can bend this guy any way that you want. But this allows you to play with his shape a little bit. And again, we're just messing with the stencil so it can fit our creature a little bit better. All right, so we got that little wrinkles in there, and I'm just doing this generically. We want to save as, if you hit done, um, it won't save it appropriately. So we're going to save this guy, and we'll call this guy call this guy bug demo. And hit OK. 
So bug demo, which is right here, you move your cursor over, and we'll get our visibility back up. Notice it read it after the fact. And we can now lower our brush size just a little bit here so it doesn't get too crazy. So now we can paint over, oh, we're still in sculpt mode. We don't want to sculpt. Go back to our paint projection, there we go. And uh, we can now go over and paint it. It'll actually take on the changes we made on that stencil. And see that curve kind of goes really good with that normal map there. So that's why I adjusted that. And you can play with that a little bit, which is pretty nice. So I'll go in here and paint a little bit. Now, if you want, you can even get this guy to tile so you can fix some things. So if we go back to our stencil, and right now it's using the skin stamp. We'll turn that off for now. Go back to our stencil. And we'll go in here and say, hey, you know, I want this guy to be tileable. So we can say use tiles. Now, obviously, we don't have it tileable, but you can make your own. But I just wanted to point that out, that that option is there, which is kind of nice. So we go in here. And you'll notice it looks a little bit different because we turned off our, our brush type. So it looks a little bit brighter here. Paint this in. And then we can move our stencil, but just by hitting the Shift key here, or S key, I should say. And um, I'm going to switch my mouse here. S key and uh, middle mouse drag. There we go. Move it over. Do some more painting. And this skin texture actually works pretty well. You can keep going and it blends just naturally. Um, this particular one, just a lucky accident on that one. So as you get your stuff more advanced and you get it where you want, you do want to be careful as you're painting with stencil, like any other painting program. And I hit the Q key to hide that for a second. <laughs> you're gonna get a little bit of stretching. See that right there? Hit the Q key to bring it back up. Then it's your job just to make sure you maintain this and fix these areas and rotate accordingly. Being able to bend your stencil though and move it where you want it to go is actually pretty priceless. It's pretty nice. We go in here and paint this here. And we'll just, um, we can even do tile if we want to temporarily. Get these guys to bleed over a little bit and then we can fix that seam after the fact. So I'm going to hit Q now, and I'm going to switch to my clone stamp. So we notice we have a seam here. Now this mainly only works if you're in this particular situation um, where you have a seam. Otherwise, if you have a tile ball, you won't have to run in this as much. But what you can do, clone stamp, I'm going to Q, or hit my control, excuse me, key, right where I want to paint, and then I can start painting over here. And we can clone stamp that. Hit that there and paint that right there. So we got a little hole right here, grab a texture here, hitting control, and then clone stamp right there, which is really nice. That actually adds a little bit of quick editing for this guy. Now let's talk a little bit about normal mapping just for a second here. Now we already have a normal map present and we can keep painting. We'll hit the Q key again. I'll go to projection mode and I'll rotate hitting the Alt key get this guy in position and again anytime you want to change your scale it's the S key here and we're going to left right mouse click drag it down and then the S key you'll go middle mouse to move back and forth and the S key to left mouse to rotate up and down or I should say uh, in the simple axis point of I believe it's like Z or whatever all right so we got this here <coughs> and we have this all it's in 2d mode so we're going to now switch this, hit the Q key, and say I want to use that exact same texture for a stamp, and I want to create a bump map. Now we can actually, let me turn off my texture just for a second so you can see this normal map we're going to make. I'm going to go in here and right click and say I want a new layer. And this new layer, now I'm not going to do normal map because it doesn't always paint very well. If we make a new normal map, uh, the vectors look a little weird. What I like to do is go to bump map because it's a little bit cleaner. And in bump map, we'll call this a details. I'll be able to spell that correctly. D shales, which is like weird because it doesn't make any sense. And we'll hit OK. So with this new uh, bump map, I'm going to load under stamp, not stencil this time, under stamp, we're going to load that same worm texture. So we'll go to uh, hooking students up and we'll grab maybe this wormy one just for the heck of it. Open it up. I'll activate it. 
So if I wanted to, I can follow the same patterns of my texture if my texture's on. Or I can randomize as I paint, which gives you a little bit more noise in here. So I can now paint this in here, and you'll see a little bit of noise going on. That's a little bit strong. So what we can do is lower that strength to like maybe, I don't know, half. And you can see you can get some nice little crustacean stuff going on. Just a little extra. And it depends whether you want it noisy or not. You don't have to have it that way. And we're painting this on here. Just to get some really cool type of deal there. And we'll just lower his opacity a little bit to make it a little more subtle. He needs some worm lotion. And he's all dry from the sun. <laughs> and the Arctic sun. So we'll go over here. That's in context. It has to do with the game. You wouldn't understand. So we got this here all set up. And uh, they're working on an Arctic game. That's what that joke was about. And it's a worm that comes out to kill you. And we're now, once we, I'm only going to do a little bit of this. We got this here all set up. You can now convert that if you wanted to by right clicking. And we say normal map for bump map. And it'll create a normal map. Now, if we turn off the bump map, we can see the normal maps there. And we can lower that a little bit and just complement a little bit of what we got. You can see that little extra disgustingness we can add a vein now if you try to again this is what I was talking about if you try to paint on the normal map it doesn't always display really well and sometimes this is based on your graphics card um, I can go in here and paint on here but it doesn't quite react the same it works okay but not necessarily really great I'll increase my brush size a little bit so you can see it a little bit more you'll see it has a little bit more deeper crevices than just converting and I'll zoom out but it doesn't quite do it exactly the same. So just keep that in mind. You can lose some of the detail. And I prefer to do the bump map when I do it. It just, to me, it works a little bit better. Let me get rid of that. Okay. All right. So that's about it. That's a little breakdown for stencil, working with stencil and showing you how to uh, create a quick extra normal map that if you wanted to, you can easily blend. I'm messing with the opacity. And I can also go in here and say, I want to changes now these don't quite work the same as color but you can add it in there if you wanted to and you'll see I have an overlay and now we have two normal maps on top of each other pretty sweet it's very literal obviously there is no color but it's overlaying pretty nicely um, before we go though one more thing I want to show is with your color on you can also control the general color sense now you can adjust color on any layer or when it's flat and this allows you to change its color range. And I went over this in my class, but I wanted to bring this up again because it's actually kind of nice. You can wash it out or make the colors deeper. Pretty cool by adjusting your color. All right. That's about it.